Okay, so Apple just came out with their new 14 inch MacBook Pro and it's got the new design, the thinner bezels, you've got the notch, the return of the old ports, but there's just one problem. It costs $2,000. And for literally half the price, you can get a baseline M1 MacBook Air. So is Apple crazy in asking for twice the amount for the new MacBook Pro or is it actually worth it? Hello, my name is D.I. Lee and you are my VIP. And I'm a software engineer by day and YouTuber by night. And on this channel, we talk about tech news and reviews. And in this video, we're going to talk about whether the new $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro is twice as good as last year's M1 MacBook Air. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the design differences, a performance test, a battery test, and I'll give you my verdict on which one of these computers I'm going to be keeping personally as my new daily driver because the MacBook that I'm using is super old. All right, so let's start off with the new MacBook Pro's designs. It is definitely a lot chunkier, beefier, heavier than the old MacBook Pro, and especially compared to the Air, it's a lot thicker. If you just look at the dimensions, the bottom half of the MacBook Pro is almost as thick as the entire thickness of the MacBook Air for that matter. The Apple logo at the top is slightly larger than it is on the last year's, and not that anyone's looking, but it does say MacBook Pro at the bottom, which I don't think you would ever be able to tell. And the rubberized pads on each of the corners here is a lot bigger and feels sturdier. All of your favorite ports are making a comeback. Everyone's excited for the return of the MagSafe, even though I've never seen anyone trip on the cord, which is how Apple originally publicized the MagSafe. As a content creator, it's really great to have SD card slide back and the HDMI is really nice. And the notch hides itself really well. You don't even notice that it's there. The display is great. It has a higher pixel density density than the MacBook Air. Okay, so in order to demonstrate how good the new displays are on the new MacBook Pro, I pulled up this HDR video. We have the Air on the left and the Pro on the right. You can already see that the motion is a lot smoother on the right because of the 120 hertz display and the blacks are a lot deeper. The Pro motion display can get up to 1000 nits of brightness on HDR content, whereas the old display on the MacBook Air can only go up up to 400 nits. Now, I don't know if all of the quality is coming through the camera and the YouTube compression, but in real life, the ProMotion 120 hertz is so much smoother and the deeper blacks make it a completely different experience. I'm really impressed with the new screen. And the Pro has the new 1080p webcam and the Air has last generation 720p, but I was on a Zoom call with both of them and it's such a small difference. And video conferencing does its own version of video compression. So the quality, you can't really tell the improvement on the 1080p one, especially when we were doing Zoom. So now that we've talked about the designs and what the two computers feel like in hand, let's see if the new MacBook Pro is twice as better as last year's MacBook Air. Okay, so basically what the test here is, is I got a 4K 10 minute video pulled up here, very similar to my normal workflow. We got some B-roll, we got some music, and it's 10 minutes long all in 4K, and we're gonna see how fast the MacBook Air, nice and light, can render this video. And then we're going to render that exact same video here on the MacBook Pro, the new one, and see if the MacBook Pro can do it twice as fast. Okay, so we got the Air on the left and the Pro on the right as usual. We're exporting this 4K video. It was about 10 minutes long, speeding this footage up 20,000%. We're speeding through all of the minutes. And right here around minute eight, the MacBook Pro finishes just around 8.11, and then the MacBook Air goes until about 8.39. Okay, so the test just finished up and the results were a lot closer than I thought they were gonna be. I didn't know if the new M1 Pro chip was gonna be twice as fast, but it only ended up being about 10% faster than the old M1 chip on the MacBook Air. And if you're finding this video helpful, I really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Now let's put both of these videos on YouTube and see if the M1 Pro has a distinct advantage in uploading these videos. Okay, so taking a time loss of uploading was a really bad idea because for 30 minutes, literally nothing happened. So I'm gonna skip right ahead and around 32, 34, the MacBook Air finishes ahead of the Pro. The Pro still has a bit ways to go. I was really surprised that the Pro didn't edge this one out. I guess when interacting with the website, nothing really matters. And it finishes around 34, 46. 
Okay, so the uploading to YouTube test just finished and the MacBook Air beat the pro bike about two minutes. Now, whenever you're interacting with a website, it's really hard to say why a computer had a certain advantage over the other. Maybe because we are uploading the same video to the same site, YouTube, put them in a queue and just finish one before the other one. So let's move it over to some software engineering stuff. I'm going to set up a local environment on both of these computers and we'll see which one can spin up and get a local environment up and running faster. Wow, that was super close. I think from the slow-mo, the MacBook Air edges out just a little bit faster. But again, this is a very close tie and the MacBook Pro doesn't seem to have a significant advantage in this test either. So for our final test, let's do a battery test. Okay, so it's 9.30 a.m. and I have my computers running a whole bunch of things meant to drain the battery life. So we have Chrome with 10 tabs open, we're in a Zoom call, and just to screw with the computer, we are running yes on terminal. If you type yes into the terminal, it will just keep running yes in an infinite loop. Okay, so I have both of these computers running the exact same setup. So we have email, and then we are running our local environment. I am watching a YouTube stream, and then we have the New York Times up, Hacker News, Twitter, Reddit, Amazon, Apple, and Twitch. And we have the exact same setup of tabs on this side as well. Okay, so we'll see you in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour since I did the heavy load battery test, so let's see the results and see which computer did better. Okay, so we got the Air on the left and the new Pro on the right. And let's see what the battery statuses are. The Air has 68% battery left, whereas the Pro has 65% battery left. So yeah, the Air beat out the Pro. I gotta say, both computers are pretty hot to the touch, but the fans in the Pro never kicked in, and the Air, of course, doesn't have any fans. Ooh. I got my I got the air to crash for just a second. And then the pro is having the ring rainbow ring of death right now trying to close this out. So yeah, I would say we've definitely pushed these computers to their limit. So we've done the performance test, we've done the battery test, and I was surprised that the MacBook Air held up as well as it did and even beat out the Pro on some of the benchmarks. So now that we've done both of these tests, it's time for me to decide which one I'm personally going to keep as my new daily driver. And I don't think it's that much of a surprise that I'm going to be keeping the MacBook Air. This is the computer I've been recommending to most of my friends and I still firmly stand by that, especially given how well it performed next to the MacBook Pro. It's lighter than it, it can run tasks almost as fast. The battery life was in fact better than it was on the Pro. And let's not forget, it's literally half the price. Anyways, VIP, that is all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on the new MacBook Pro or the Air. I respond to all my comments, so I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment and I'd be happy to answer any question that you might have. Okay, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.